Hey everybody. So I I must I probably will have sped up through this whole mixing process, but just let you basically see how I do the mixing and how I use a metal sink strainer that's like a mesh kind of sink strainer to pour my flow trawl. It typically has fuggers and that's the best way to catch them. And I was lucky today that really there weren't many at all. So that's kind of unusual. It just depends on the gallon you get. And I've been using Oetrol a lot lately, so I thought today I would switch to Floetrol. And this is Jill Jackson's challenge. She's my moderator on my Facebook page in my group. If you're not a part of it, come join it. And um, there's a link below the video for the Facebook group. The, the challenge is uh, she made up a spreadsheet little file in the file section and it's called rolling the dice and you roll the dice and it tells you what you're going to paint that day. If you're having a hard time figuring out what you want to do then you roll the dice and you figure out the method you want to use. You roll the dice and you figure out the colors. <clears throat> so the weekend challenge that she posted was to do a rainbow colored pour on white negative space. So I'm going to use a white canvas with white paint on it and leave some white negative space but then I'm going to use the rainbow colors and I decided I wanted to do the ribbon pour with the, uh, the rainbow colors and I'm using this Arteza plastic tray that I cut the edge off of this side put my paints in here and do a ribbon rainbow pour and um, I don't think I'm going to put silicone in. I really want to, so I'm debating whether I want to put silicone in. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to use OGX coconut milk. I'm going to put one drop in the purple, one drop in the green, one drop in the red. So I'm going to just put one drop and I did not do a full pump, I just did one drop. That's very important with OGX coconut milk which has dimethicone in it. That's what you're looking for in the ingredients. You don't want a full pump. Too much will give you less. Very little will give you a lot. So I'm just going to do a couple of quick stirs. And that's that. Okay? So I'm going to put those aside. The colors I used are Cadmium Yellow Light Hue. This is Creative Inspirations from Jerry's Artorama. The purple I mixed Artist Loft Violet with Liquitex Basics Prism Violet. The blue is Brilliant Blue by Artist Loft. The rest are Artist Loft. Deep red, emerald green, and orange. So the colors of the rainbow, red, yellow, orange, green, blue, and purple. Get these out of the way. I have my Wilton Easy Glide Spreader. It's like an icing spreader. It's great for putting your base coat on your canvas. And I used Flood Floetrol Latex Base, which means water-based. And you can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's, and places like that for about $14 for a gallon. And I highly recommend it over using glue any day. And um, this goes quite a long way. You can do many, many paintings with it. So it's, it's worth the money that you put into it. So that's one to one ratio with all the colors and then I added water and the water is the variable. You always do one to one ratio or, or I do anyway. People do different ratios. I do one to one. The water is what's flexible because some paints are just thicker than others. So 
that's where you squirt in a little water and you mix it up and it's more important to get the consistency right than anything and that's what was in my bottle is water it has 10% Floetrol and 90% water this is Artist Loft White in this big cup that I mixed up mixed the same way so and get ready to do this ribbon pour and hope that it turns out beautiful I wanted to show you, I don't think I showed you, I went to an art conference last weekend a week ago, well over a week ago, I went on a Wednesday and took Thursday and Friday classes with a master artist named Jack, Jacob Daniels his studio is called Overflow Studios in Boone and he is an oil painter and he is fabulous I mean like uber talented very gifted and I am not an oil painter and it's definitely out of my comfort zone but our first class was the challenge he gave us a photo of a spoon so this is a photograph and then he gave us a, a 8 by 10 wood cradled panel sprayed with gold paint and challenged us to paint the spoon on the, the uh, wooden panel and that's what I did we did this in probably about four hours I guess so you know I'm not used to working really slow and oil paint takes days to dry so I also didn't have a very fine brush to do all the fine detail but I did this with just the brushes that he had and that kind of thing but I sold the painting and I didn't realize that the spoon is a symbol out in the world for people that have uh, chronic illness such as um, you know where they're fatigued and they can't eat certain things and you know have chronic illness that is going on they measure their energy and they equate it to a spoonful of energy and so however many spoonfuls they have as you take away a spoonful as their energy is used then at the end of the day they have no more spoons left and so this was symbolic of that which I had no clue and uh, so a lady on Facebook one of my followers saw this and wanted to buy it from me and so I'm, I've sealed it and I'm shipping it off next week and I was just really I really enjoyed this exercise of painting a spoon about just using white and brown and gold and black or blue and crimson actually to make black which is a really really dark purple but um, I enjoyed this and I may do more of these I might do a series of them but anyway it was a really fun challenge so that was the first day and then I, and we started on a bigger canvas that afternoon on Thursday and then Friday we did a landscape <clears throat> and the landscape was supposed to be about painting light I've got a hair I got a hair on my canvas so we actually washed the whole canvas we washed over it with, with a coat of um, kind of a bright yellow orange color and then painted in whatever we wanted to do and I did it differently from everybody else I just always am a little different but I did this landscape kind of thing we started with the clouds which my clouds kind of look like popcorn you know but I still like them I love the colors I used and then uh, the reflection on the water I wanted I wanted a landscape with water because I think that's soothing so this was a painting I did um, with oils and I am just really proud of the way it turned out uh, usually when you use oils if you mix them together too much it turns to mud so I was pleased that I was able to keep my colors still bright so this was the projects I did on my art conference and I just had a fabulous time there and I posted some worship from the live worship um, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. If you see that on my profile, that's what that was. So today I'm going to do a 16 by 20 canvas. And I've got push pins on the bottom. And I'm going to put this white, kind of 
of a thin coat of white just to give my surface something wet to slide on and I make sure to take it around to the edges too so that the sides match the top because if you let your white paint dry it's going to look different than the primer that's on the side of the canvas so you really need it to wrap around the edges. So, just making sure, making sure my corners are covered and all that. Okay, so I'm just going to let it drift around a little bit, shake it a little bit. You can drop it on the table a few times or whatever you're pouring on. That will kind of release any bubbles. So I'm just kind of making sure it's a pretty decent level coat, but it doesn't have to be perfect because as it dries it will level out. So if I see any spots that are kind of low, I just go in and I add more paint. Like I said, it will level itself out. So I'm just getting the low spots. I got a fork. I got a fork and a knife in there to mix my paint with. I use whatever I can find. It's a deeper cup, so that's why I pulled out my knife. Okay, so I just try to use every bit of paint if it gets on the table, try to use it on the edges so you don't waste any paint hardly at all. And I just put down some clean butcher paper so I'm going to just quickly wipe up what I can and off the tool. You don't want your tool drying with um, paint on it because then it won't be smooth when it, you use it the next time if you can't get the paint off. Okay, so this is what I'm going to pour out of and it's got six slots. So I'm going to put the colors in each slot, but if they go over the edge a little bit, that's okay. I'm not worried about it being perfect. I kind of want them to intermingle a little bit anyway. So I'm going to put these in the order of a rainbow and pour them in here. And let's see, I think I'll put just a little bit of white for now. And I mixed more paint than I need, like I always do. So I do want it to go over the edge a little bit, so I'm going to just kind of, kind of pour in the area it's supposed to be in, but I do want them to kind of overlap each other. And I want to give a big shout out to, to Jill Jackson. Her YouTube channel is Sister Earth, I think. Sister Earthification or something like that. Um, she does a lot of resin work. She does just really fun, funky colors. And she does happy colors like I do. She's been a wonderful help to me in my Facebook group making sure to respond to people and answer questions. She's just really fabulous. So I want to say thank you to her. And this is her challenge, so I'm hoping everybody enjoys doing it. So let's see what happens. So 
so what happened is I ran out of paint so what I'm going to do that's pretty in the thing here is I'm going to load it up again And I'm going to put a little strip of white. I don't know. I'm not going to put much. So I'm wondering. So I can't do it that way because then the colors will come out opposite. But that would be kind of cool too. Maybe I will. That was fun. That was really fun. I don't think I have enough paint to do it this way. So let me put a little a little of each of the colors in. It's nice to always be challenged to think outside of the box a little bit. Instead of just doing a regular pour every time, is just trying to come up with different ways that you can be creative. There's so many, and there's the cells popping up. So I'm going to turn it back this way. So there. Kind of funky. So I don't want this draining on the table, so I'm going to put something under the edge to put some sticks under to keep it from draining. And that's some pretty stuff right there. I've got paper here. I'm just going to try to scoop it up. Push it with the stick. I'm trying to decide if I want to tilt, but I want the negative space. I don't want to really bring it in or out further because then it'll take my white negative space away. Negative space is this area right here where the color is not happening. That's called negative space. It can be white, it can be black, it can be any color, but it's, it's an area where there's not the action going on. That is your negative space my torch the other day because I do own one. I'm going to turn it on. I don't feel as safe with the torch. I feel like it can make your, it can kind of heat your paint and that kind of thing. And a troll. I mean the thing with OGX, I'm sorry, is that those cells are going to pop up on their own without you heating it at all. So it really didn't change any of the bubbles or the you know cell action. 
And I think I have a few lumps, so I'm just going to try to get out what few lumps I see. That's something right there. I don't know what it is, but it messed up my orange, so I'm going to try to go back over that area with orange. So it doesn't make that funky looking. So like if there's areas that you don't like, can cover them up. There's this little doop right there, but I'm going to leave it. There's a little dot. I'm going to cover the dot. And I think I'm going to pretty much just leave it as is. So there's great drips underneath that are colorful. So I'm going to try to leave them and leave it alone. So my red must have been a little bit on the lumpy side. Or possibly it could have been in the white underneath. But usually if you look from the side, you can see whatever lumps are going to form. I suspect it's the red because that's the area that I keep seeing it in. So I kind of wish I hadn't put the OGX in because I would have loved to have seen it just as a ribbon of rainbow colors. But that's okay that there's some cells going on. I'm not opposed to that. So when you're blowing with a straw, a big straw is going to make the air go out further. A smaller straw is going to make it more condensed in one area. Okay, so that, the white is not real thick right here, and that's why it's not wanting to really move. I like the little cell action going on here. But this white is too thin, and I'm not going to fool with it. See where the white is thicker? You can manipulate the paint. So maybe I will put some white here just to... Um, make it look kind of uniform on both sides. So I'm just adding a little white, not on top of the red, but right beside it. See, I can take my finger even and scoot it, and it will level out on its own. I didn't get it close enough there. So I'll just do it a little bit and leave it. So I noticed the purple had some blue showing through and I like that. So I'm actually going to turn this. And there may be some cells that pop up because I put the silicone in the red, purple, and green. So, because they're, you know, the green especially, whatever touched the green is kind of selling up. So, you know, it might do a little bit more while it dries. So, what I'm going to do, I've got to go to the store. I just take my paints and 
cover them with something like a towel or a piece of foil or plastic or whatever. And there's those pretty colors. Actually, do something a little funky on the end there, that corner. Okay. paper towel touched the canvas, but oh well. Then take my knife out of the white. If you enjoyed it, I'll have a picture of the dried painting at the end of the video so you can see how it dried with all the cells. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell in the bottom right and that will give you a notification when I post videos and Check out the links below, like the Facebook group, and there's Patreon and PayPal, and the Amazon link with all my recommendations of products that I use. And um, just check it out and see what you can find there. And come follow me on Instagram. I'm Sandra underscore Lett on Instagram. Check me out there and follow me and uh, connect with me, and I will connect with you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. So I totally forgot to bring you down close to the picture. Instead of bringing the picture up, I'm going to bring you down just so you can see what's going on. So I like that kind of stuff. I like a little bit of it, not like a lot. And I don't like it uniform. I like it to be random as if it were formed on its own. But I like the way the colors kind of fade into each other and kind of there's the cross section right there and there's some cool stuff going on there and then in the corner where I just let the paint come right out of the uh, container at the, the back of the canvas there the bottom corner so there it is. I like it because it's colorful and happy. So, pretty cool. All right, thank you. Have a great day.